So yeah, can we have a hand for John from SAS who's going to kick us off tonight? Thanks, John. Thank you, mate. So welcome everyone. I'm John Spooner. I work for SAS and head up the advanced analytics area. Um, just a quick show of hands. Who's heard of SAS software before? Wow. So those of you that don't know us, basically we're a analytical organisation of being around 40 years now and we are the world's largest privately owned software company. Um, our, as we go through this presentation, you'll get an idea of what we do and how we're moving into the, the area of artificial intelligence. So one thing that I just want to start off with in terms of this as an area is it is an area littered with jargon. Whether it be artificial intelligence, machine learning, statistics, data mining, text mining, there's a whole bunch of jargon that gets utilized in this area. But primarily, what are we trying to do uh, as a, an organization? So if we go to the next slide, really what we as SAS are trying to do is fundamentally try to make as many decisions as possible in as automated way as possible. And that's primarily what we're trying to do. And the way that we're doing that is to take huge amounts of data, whether it be traditional transactional data that organizations have on their customers, whether it be textual data, whether it be photos, whether it be voice data, whether it be social media, whether it be the way sensors are communicating with each other. What we're trying to do is to take all of that information and work out, well, can we learn from that data to then start to automate some sort of decision? And what we're trying to do is to involve as little human interaction as that as possible. So data comes into this process. We then learn that, make some sort of decision. The decision will be whether or not a transaction is fraudulent, whether or not um, a chip is about to fail. And we would make some sort of decision, but then there will be a feedback loop to then inform that particular process and learn from that process based on the decisions that we've made, whether those decisions are right or they're wrong. Machine learning and artificial intelligence is being talked about like it's a brand new thing. So, but as I said, SAS has been around for 40 years doing primarily the same thing taking data, learning from that data, and making a decision. And if we look back in the 1950s, we have been building, or people have been talking about, building these automated uh, decisions. We can go to the next, but why, why is it important now? And there's really, I feel, three main things that are driving this industry. So the first of all is the amount of data that we now collect. Every movement that we do, Every interaction that we do, we are generating data and storing that data. So we can get more of an idea of how a particular process is working, whether it be a manufacturing process or the way that you're spending on your credit card. Also, what's key now is we've got huge amounts of compute power available to us. So not only can we store that data, which is actually the relatively easy thing, we can now process that using advanced techniques to work out automatically what are the patterns within that data and what are the levers within that data. And again, if we go to the next thing, what we've also got are what we really refer to as algorithms that allow us to automatically spot any patterns that are within that data. So SAS started traditionally just using some statistical algorithms algorithms that are seen as regression type models, but primarily what they're doing is trying to pick up some pattern within the data. What's changed now is we've got lots more different algorithms, different machine learning algorithms that allow us to pick more complicated patterns out of the data that traditionally weren't used because of the fact we didn't have compute power. So now we're starting to migrate into deep learning that will automatically pick out patterns from that data using the compute power available to us. And I just wanted to share a few examples of where SAS is being used now to do a form of artificial intelligence. And 
because I think artificial intelligence is all about automating decision making. So one example is that of building a recommendation engine. So every time you go onto very.co.uk's website, you will be presented with a personalized for you option. So based on your buying behavior and people like you, we will serve up recommendations for you. And as you move through time and as you buy different types of products and other customers buy different types of products, your personalized sort order will then change. So that's one example of using some transactional data to build a machine that learns. Another piece of work that we've done with British Airways is we now automate their complaint categorization. So if you have an unfortunate incident with British Airways and you make a complaint, then it's SaaS software sitting behind that that's taking the unstructured data and automating, well, what are you talking about? What's the sentiment of what you're talking about? Were you happy with the check-in, but unhappy with the food on the flight? And then pushing that complaint to the most relevant uh, department for that to then get initialized. So that's an example of where we're now moving into more unstructured data. And then the third one is where we're moving into photo um, analysis of photos. So we're working with a manufacturing organization that's looking at taking pictures of the chips that come off their manufacturing plant and automating the decisions that allow us to say, well, is that chip defect or not, based on patterns that we've seen before. And the reason that I've used those three as an example is, go to the next slide. What, what we want to do is to open up now that type of decisioning and put a human front end onto that. To start to then say, can we use these traditional analytical algorithms to add some human decision making? So for example, you would then communicate with a Siri type device that then says, um, tell me the forecast for sales over the next 12 months. And by knowing what's happened in the past, and by knowing what we mean by sales and what we mean by forecasts, we're then able to predict what's going to happen moving forward and then uh, report that back to the individual. And that's a way that then combines both taking our traditional unstructured data um, to, do the com to do the natural language processing but then applying some analytical algorithms to automate then the decision off the back of that. So those were just some examples that we're seeing at the moment, just in general. What I want to do is hand over to Vince now to then put the FinTech spin on this.